Hey, let's pray together. Lord, you are our shepherd. You are faithful. Your steadfast love endures forever, and we trust in you. Lord, we thank you that we have the opportunity to come together and worship you. And on this weekend, we do. Lord, we do remember those who have made our freedom possible. And so we pause to remember those who've given their lives. And Lord, I pray that we will always honor those who have sacrificed so much for us. And we thank you, Lord, that we live in a country where we can worship you freely today. We don't take that for granted, knowing that that is not the case around the world. And so we pause to remember. Lord, we thank you. Our hearts are stirred because that points us to the one who gave his life for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. While we were yet sinners, you came and died for us so that we could know you and be with you, be at home in your love. So we praise you, Jesus, the Lord of all, the God of all nations, the Savior of the world. And we now give our lives to you, our hearts to you yet again. Remind us of your faithfulness in this time. May we never be the same. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We just heard a beautiful psalm. You've heard kind of a recurring theme, lots of psalms being read, lots of psalms being sung, and we're going to be in a psalm even here this morning. Go ahead and turn to Psalm 89. I'll get there in just a moment. Uh, We just heard a psalm of David. The psalm that we'll look at today is not from David. It's from a psalmist, Ethan, the Ezraite. David's psalm, how about this, a thousand years old. Still popular today. How about that? Do you know the, do you know the, another song that is a thousand years old that is still popular today? Now, of course, the music has changed because it's not the music. It's the lyrics that are sacred. It's the words that we see in Psalm 23 that we continue to hear over and over again in various ways. And many of the psalms, we, we come back to them because today we are talking about the faithfulness of God. And we turn often to the psalmist who proclaims the faithfulness of God over and over again. So throughout our campus, across all of our services, we just thought it'd be great to pause and reflect on the year that was and just praise God for his faithfulness. You've heard it in our music. We've sung it to him. We're seeing it in his word. God is faithful. He is always faithful. Now, if you're like me, you you might be thinking, well, he's faithful. I I agree with that. I believe that. He's faithful first to himself, as we'll see today. He's faithful to all his promises. He's going to come through. But what does that have to do with me? Because often I'm not faithful. That's who he is, not so much who I am. There seems to be a disconnect sometimes. How does his faithfulness impact our lives every single day? Well, We thought it'd be a great moment here for us to look back on the year that was. You know, we're coming back to life, as Megan noted. Feels like the pandemic is is kind of moving into the past. We pray that is the case. As the pandemic began, we began with a psalm. We talked to our staff, and and I mentioned it here. Psalm 137 uh, paints this picture of the people in exile. You might remember a year ago, if you were here, a lot of you are new and you weren't here a year ago. A year ago, we walked through the book of Daniel, starting right about now through the summer. We said, what is it to live in exile? Little did we know in our planning, we would literally be in exile, hiding out in our homes at times, where we couldn't go anywhere. What is it to live in exile? We started the, the pandemic by looking at the people of God in exile. And it says there in Psalm 137, it's a communal lament. We talked about the importance of lamenting and grief and the process of grief. And it's been that for us. We talked about how the people there in exile, they hung their harps, their instruments up in the trees, and they wept by the rivers in Babylon. They wept because they were not home. They wept because they could not gather and worship in Jerusalem. And they grieved the loss that they were experiencing. We've all walked through that. But there in that same psalm, they said, hey, let our mouths be shut if we do not remember that God is faithful. The psalmist is saying we can sing in exile. 
We can sing even through the troubled times, even in exile. We can praise him and worship him. And this has been the case for us this year. And I just want to pause along with Kelly and others who today have said, way to go, church family. You've been faithful. You've been so faithful. And as our ministry team, our staff, just wants to come around and proclaim and say to you, we're, we're so grateful for you. You've been faithful. We shared all that we have. We've given so that we can serve our city. You have served those in need because this pandemic has hit those who are uh, the the marginalized and the weak and the the least and the lost have been impacted by this and you've been faithful. So I just want to say as your pastor, I want to say thank you. Today, really the central message that I want you to hear is this. You can trust in God because he's entirely faithful. You can trust in him because he's entirely faithful. Let's reflect on his faithfulness today. I just want to remind you over and over again of his faithfulness. Remember, faith is trusting in God for who he is and what he has done, regardless of what the circumstances look like. If this year has taught us anything, it's that even when things don't go as we think they ought to go, he is still faithful. The writer of Hebrews puts it this way, Hebrews 11 Verse 1, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Faith has this this present and future orientation. But don't miss this. Faith is in a person and his promises. We trust him because of who he is. A lot uh, of us have had a lot to look forward to this year. Our hope has been in him You see, faith is an active trust. Don't miss this. Faith is action, right? It's not just a a thought in our minds, a hope or a crossing of our fingers. Faith is an active trust. It's placing your trust in God. And that's an action we'll talk about today. But listen, the enemy will stop at nothing to keep us from believing that God is faithful. That's been his ploy from the start, and it still is today. I'm sure there have been times throughout this year, past year and a half, where you've wondered, God, are you really faithful? What is happening here? And it has impacted a lot of us. Many people, frankly, have turned away from God because their faith was actually in their circumstances and not in him. Researchers are telling us, I've referenced this a bit, they're telling us that one out of every three Christians, I might say churchgoers, are no longer going to church. In fact, the experts tell us that, that what, ha- what has happened during the pandemic is that we've been catapulted into the future for about five, ten years out. Whatever trajectory we were heading, that's, that's been just catapulted. It's true in our businesses, organizations, seems to be true in churches. I believe God is refining his church. I believe that he's saying, are you going to be faithful to me or to the circumstances around you? And we are proclaiming today that God is faithful and we will trust in him. He's the one who determines the trajectory of our lives. So we put our hope in him. And today we're going to see that he's always been faithful. He will always be faithful. And so you, listen, can be faithful to him today tomorrow and forever first thing i want you to see here in psalm 89 yes he has always been faithful and so let's look at his word now first again to note this is a psalm written by ethan the ezraite we know a little bit about him from other parts of scripture but this is a time of trouble this is what we know he's writing this song this song to the lord and it's a time of disruption This is what's called the psalm of disorientation. It was Walter Brueggemann who said there are three types of psalms. Uh, We've talked about this here before as we've walked through a series on the psalms. But he noted that there are psalms of orientation. There are psalms that just the psalmist is just God is great and all is well. The sun is shining and life is good. And the whole psalm is like that. Blessed be the name of the Lord for he is good to us. Those are the psalms we like to sing. We want all of life to be like that. Then he said there there are psalms of of disorientation. 
Psalms of disorientation are when there's all kinds of disruption and trouble all around the psalmist. That's the way the world is often. And and, then the psalm doesn't end with great hope, but really still in disorientation. This psalm is a psalm of disorientation. The only final word at the end of it all. We won't cover the entire psalm, but the end of it is blessed be the Lord, even though things are out of control. He just ends with one line. But I praise God for psalms of disorientation. I mean, this is real life, isn't it? This is where life is a lot of the time. And my, what a disruption we've experienced. There's psalms of orientation, disorientation, there's psalms of reorientation, psalms where there's trouble and then the psalmist comes back around and says, but you know, but here's what's true. And it finishes on a high note. I just praise God for psalms like this. Look at verse 1. This is real life. In a time of disruption, the psalmist says this, I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. The psalmist has something to share, and he's going to share it. He's going to proclaim it because he says God is faithful even in the midst of disruption, even in a time of disorientation. Look at verse 2. For I said steadfast love will be built up forever. In the heavens you will establish your faithfulness. At the heart of his faithfulness, look at this, is his persevering love. It's his covenantal love. The psalmist says, I'll proclaim your love regardless of what comes my way. Can you do that today? I want you to think with me, what are you going through? We, we could all reference this in regard to the pandemic, but what are you facing these days? What are you up against? What kind of disruption is taking place in your life? Will you proclaim his love? First, will you proclaim his faithfulness? Look at verse 3. You have said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. See, the psalmist is saying, you have pronounced your covenantal love to us through your servant David. Your promises stand true. I love this. He's coming back to God and putting all of his promises in his face. We can do the same. We can say, Lord, you promised this would be the case. You promised that you would be with me always. Ethan brings his promises back to God. Look at verse 4. I will establish your offspring forever and build your throne for all generations. Selah. You may know that Selah is a, is a pause. It's an interlude in, in a song. And really it, it means, hey, hey, let's stop, 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 stop. Let's think about this for a minute. It's like an interlude in a song. Wait, pause. Let's not sing. Let's, let's stop. Let's think about what was just sung. Think about this, that he is true and faithful to all generations. He's faithful to you. He has always been faithful to you. Selah. Let's pause and think about that today. This is a great practice in worship. We do it here constantly. It's a great practice in your life. I hope you'll do it tomorrow. Yes, pause and praise God for those that we remember who've given their lives for our freedom. Let's pause and pause well, but let's pause and remember God and his faithfulness to us. Not only as a nation, but each of us individually. He's been faithful to you this year. And you can praise him. And you can have more faith in him because he's been faithful. This is a great practice as you read the word of God. Read Hebrews 11 today. Read Hebrews 11 that talks about those who remain faithful to God even though at great peril, even loss of life and persecution, they remain faithful because God is a faithful God. Read Hebrews 11 today. Take time tomorrow to read it. And in the midst of it, say, la, pause and consider, reflect on God's faithfulness because when we do, you see, our faith is activated And what he has already set in motion becomes our own belief and promise that comes to us. His faithfulness breeds faith in us so that we can trust him more. You see, what he's done in your life, what he's already set in motion in Christ, if you are in Christ, if you've placed your faith in him, your trust in him for your salvation, for your life, for your purpose, for all of your days, if you place your trust in him, then your faith has been activated, set in motion what he's already set in motion. Your faith now is bringing about 
this trust in him and greater trust in him as you walk with him, regardless of what it seems to be. God is faithful. You can trust in him. Your redemption and your coming glorification is already set in motion. Praise be to God. The best is yet to come. We've said it. In him, the best is always yet to come. Regardless of what comes our way, Selah. Look at verse 5. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. He's saying heaven itself declares your wonders and your faithfulness. Let's proclaim it together, he says. Let's all determine to leave this place today, go into our homes, into our communities. Let's proclaim the faithfulness of God. He's always been faithful. Look, this is what really corporate worship is all about. It's why it's so critical that we are together every Sunday, that it's a pattern of our lives because we proclaim together the faithfulness of God. I've been so encouraged today. You know, corporate worship means, again, that we're not alone. And when we come here faithless at times, because we are often faithless, we, 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 we get caught up in the fact that, wait, maybe it's true. I believe it all over again. And those who are singing around me, even the choir singing over me, I do believe this. I'm ready for another week because God is faithful and I've been reminded of his faithfulness. We're reminding one another. Look at verse 6. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord, a God greatly to be feared in the counsel of the holy ones and awesome above all who are around him? The psalmist is saying, even among the heavenly beings, and this is really interesting, what we see here is this divine counsel. I don't know if you know this. Biblical writers talk about a divine counsel around God. There's a spiritual realm of those who are with him. We see it in, in, in Genesis 1. We see it uh, when, when they're going after taking down King Ahab. This council gathers with God. We see it in the book of Job. They come together to really debate God's policy around judgment and, and how he deals with those who are evil and how those, he deals with those who are good. It's like, it's like God's staff team. It's really interesting. He doesn't need anyone. He shares his leadership. He's sharing it even in the spiritual realm. And what the psalmist is doing here, he's reminding us there is a spiritual realm. Friends, don't miss this. God is faithful, but oftentimes we fight our battles with earthly, earthly forms and, and, and weapons instead of coming to him by faith. We come to him by faith, and he, he then shows himself faithful. We must acknowledge there is a spiritual realm, an evil presence that is behind all the evil on earth, personified in those who do not follow after God. It's why Paul said that Jesus disarmed the powers and authorities, triumphing over them by the power of the cross. How do we overcome evil in the world? How do we come against those who would come against our God? How do we face the challenges of this world? We do it in the same way, the way of Jesus, the power of the cross. What does that mean? Sacrificial love enemy love dying to self in order to serve and love others that's how we overcome evil in the world it is an upside down kingdom that we talk about often and god directs it all verse 8 this is the key verse for the message here oh lord god of hosts who is mighty as you are oh lord with your faithfulness all around you the niv says you, Lord, are mighty, and your faithfulness surrounds you. Think about that. The amplified version, which really is just kind of parsing all the words and such, it says it this way. Your faithfulness surrounds you as an intrinsic, unchangeable part of your being. You're faithful to the core. And I love what the NLT says, the New Living Translation. It says, where, where is there anyone as mighty as you, O oh Lord? You are entirely faithful. He's faithful, friend. Be reminded today, he is always faithful. It's at the center of who he is. Again, the writer in Hebrews eleven six 6, it says this, For without faith it is impossible to please God. Think about that. Not improbable, not unlikely, 
impossible to please God. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists. That would be the first step, right? He is, and and he is God, and that he rewards those who seek him. He rewards those who seek him, who desire to be with him. Many of us think we've come to believe that it's actually impossible to please God, period. Some of us live that way. Some of us live with this constant kind of undercurrent within our lives always, that God is just mildly upset with us all the time. That is not the case, friends. He loves you. And think about this. Whether you're faithful or not, he remains faithful. Or how about this? When we are faithful, that doesn't change his faithfulness either. He's faithful because it's who he is. But don't miss this. It's impossible to please him without faith. And what we do instead, we come to him with our works. We strive to please him with our effort. We, we strive to please him with our intelligence, learning more about the Bible. And all the while we miss and bypass actually being with him. I tell our staff team often, there's a way to do the work of God in such a way that it will kill the work of God in you. Because what he wants is you. He wants us to come to him. God delights in our being with him more than our being like him. I say it this way often. Stop trying to be like him and just behold him. Just look at him. Just look at him, and what you will find is a God who's faithful to you. If we we will be with him, focus on him, we will become like him. And his faithfulness will breed greater faith in us. Even 2 Timothy 2.13, it says, if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. It's who he is. He's saying our faith doesn't impact God at all. God will always be faithful to you. Back to Psalm 89, verse 9. You rule the raging of the sea. When, it, when, it, when its waves rise, you still them. I'm reminded of Jesus who literally calmed the sea. Whatever raging sea you're facing today, God is there to bring his peace in the midst. Look at verse 10. You crushed Rahab, likely a a reference to Egypt, like a carcass. You scattered your enemies with your mighty right arm. He can destroy any barrier, any disruption, any satanic power that's in your life right now, that's coming against you. God is faithful. Look at verse 11. The heavens are yours. Just just continue to be reminded he's faithful. The earth also is yours. The world and all that is in it, you have founded them. You created everything and everyone. You own everything that is. God owns it all. The north and the south, verse 12, you have created them. Tabor and Hermon, joylessly praise your name. These are two notable mountains. I love that. The mountains just rising up, praising you, giving you glory. This past week, I was able to get away, get away praise God. Stacy and I were able to take uh, her mom uh, with us to the beach. We were at the beach for a few days. And it was glorious. It was amazing. I just stand there. I did it at it, it full moon at night. Just going out on the beach and just letting the waters come to, I'm sorry. Not sorry, but it was amazing. Just let y'all in on it a little bit. I know. We all want to be there. And, and it was just glorious, just looking out over the ocean and just considering God's faithfulness, how good he is, how powerful he is. And I'm standing there on the beach, little speck of a life that is mine, looking over the expanse of the ocean, which is just one sight of a billion that he sees all the time. And I thought about how just one little teeny planet in a giant galaxy where there are billions and billions of galaxies with billions and billions of stars. And I thought about the sand and how the psalmist says his thoughts outnumber the grains of sand on the planet. Can you imagine every beach on the planet? Go and count every little grain of sand. God has more thoughts about you. What is he thinking? And again, some of us think, well, I think he's pretty upset with me. No, friends, listen. He loves you. 
He's faithful to you. He has always been faithful. And look at this. He will always be faithful. Verse 13 says, you have a mighty arm, strong in your hand, high your right hand. This is a reference to his power. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. God is covered in justice and steadfast love. He's surrounded in faithfulness. He is faithful and he always will be faithful. Verse 15, blessed are the people who know the festal shout. I love what the message says. The message says, those who know the password of praise. I love that. Those who know how to come together and praise him, who walk, O oh Lord, in the light of your face. We get to see him, to walk with him, to be with him. We exult in your name all the day and in your righteousness are exalted. God raises us up. Look at verse 17. For you are the glory of their strength. By your favor, our horn is exalted. He gives us strength is what he's saying. For our shield belongs to the Lord, our King, to the Holy One of Israel. God protects and guides you. Praise be to God. We're still standing. We're still here. You're still faithful. Friends, he's always been faithful. He will always be faithful. So listen, you can be faithful to him today, tomorrow, and forever. God is entirely faithful faithful praise be to God Jeremiah 17 7 says this blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord whose confidence is in him don't miss that as we close our time I want to remind you our trust is in a person and that person can be trusted because he's faithful our confidence is in him and if you've never given your heart to Jesus today is the day It's why he's called you here. It's why you're watching me online. Because you're to give your heart to him. The first step is to, if you're asking, how can I be faithful to him? The first thing you need to do is give your heart to the one who's faithful. Who's already given his life for you. Lived the perfect life for you. Died on your behalf so that you could be saved. The Lord is our salvation. It says in Romans 5, 1, Therefore, since we have been justified, look, by faith, Not by works, not by how intelligent we are, but by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace will only come through Christ because he is our peace. He is faithful, friends. Be encouraged today. I love what David the psalmist said in Psalm 119, verse 32. He said, I run in the path of your commands for you have set my heart free. And there we get to the heart of it all. Why are we faithful to him? Why do we obey him? Why do we give our lives to him completely? Because he has set our hearts free. He's forgiven us. He's been faithful to forgive us. Though we turned away from him, though we've been faithless, he's been faithful to us. So we turn to him, we give him our lives. Friends, it's been a long winter. It's been a hard year. But like a seed in the snow, you've been buried to grow. And and though it's hard to wait, and if you're in a season now, know this, harvest is coming. And though we continue to wait, sometimes the waiting prolongs, but greater is the promise. And so if you're like me today, And you want to trust him more. Here's been a prayer throughout this pandemic, and 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 I want it to be a prayer in my life. Lord, if, if you're not done working, then, Lord, I'm not done waiting. Continue to do your work in us. We may be coming out of a pandemic, but we know that life is hard. But God is faithful, and he will always be faithful. You can trust in him today, tomorrow, and forever. We thought it would be a great way to close our time. I'm going to close in prayer, and then we're going to reflect on the faithfulness of God as Stephen comes to lead us. So let's all pray together, and let's praise him. God, we thank you for your faithfulness. We place our, our hearts, our lives in your hands. 
Some of us today, friend, maybe you're like me. You just you need to say to the Lord, I'm back. I'm back. I am back. I trust in you. I give my life to you anew. You are faithful to me. You will always be faithful. I will be faithful to you. Lord, I'm grateful that we can all say together, he's always been faithful to me. We praise you, Lord. In the name of Jesus.